Hi, Lisa Marie Kosas, founder of Global One Health. This video is a continuation in the Animal Flow series. Today I'm going to talk about crab reach, which is one of the four form-specific stretches in Animal Flow. These form-specific stretches are one of the six components in the Animal Flow practice. So the crab reach is going to begin from the static crab position, as it would sound. I break down the fine-tuned points about crab uh, position and the uh, static crab activations in the first video in the Animal Flow series, which is video 15A. So all the details about crab activations you can find in that video. So the crab reach, I'm gonna do it on both sides, is going to begin in the seated crab position. Um, both hands and feet are pressing firmly into the ground. I wanna maintain neutral spine in the beginning of that seated crab position. No rounding of the back. I'm looking uh, a little bit on an upward angle. My arms are going to be externally rotated, so they're corkscrewed outward, um, enabling my fingertips to try to face backwards. Now, it's very important that I activate my upper mid back before I begin the reach, as I'm trying to externally rotate my arms, but also retract my shoulder blades and depress my shoulder blades or pack the shoulders. And I talk about that uh, packing in video four. So. I'm gonna begin with one arm bent in front of me about six to eight inches away from my face and I'm looking directly at that hand. I begin the crab reach um, by pressing my feet down into the ground and that down arm and driving them down as I drive my pelvis up into a bridge. Now the goal is to get up as high as you can in this bridge. So by coming all the way up, I am in full extension of my hip joints Therefore, my glutes are fully activated to enable a nice stretch in the hip flexors and the anterior part of my hip joint. I'm also in as much spinal extension as I can get into. So this is also good to open up the front of the spine, the abdominal wall, and such. So I'm looking at the hand. Now, if I can get to maximum extension of the hips and spine and hit this full three-point bridge, then I can continue with the development of the full crab reach which would be my arm from this point will continue to travel. I'm going in a much slower motion than you need to, but you can certainly do it slowly. I'm gonna allow the arm to continue to travel overhead. Notice my eyes and focus will follow my hand and arm the whole time. Now in this position, now my arm is kind of relaxed, draped over my head, so to speak. I'm now looking down and my down arm and my spine is rotated towards that down arm but I've maintained full extension of the glutes, of the hips and the spine, and full activation of the back, trunk, core, and glutes. From here, I come out of the position in exact um, opposite patterning. So I'm gonna begin where I left off by the traveling of the arm. Notice again, my hand in focus and head follow the traveling arm. I pass through that high point of extension of that bridge. And then as I, once I get here, I will now begin the descent by initiating the hip hinge as I slowly lower myself down. Notice I'm maintaining external rotation and corkscrew of that down arm that is very important to not have that shoulder internally rotate or collapse forward. Then I've lost a lot of the support structure of my lats, which are prime stabilizers of the shoulder girdle in this position. So just so you can see from both sides, I will switch. So you can see from the back angle, again, seated crab position, pelvis is down while I set myself up. The down arm is corkscrewed, externally rotated, fingertips facing back, six to eight inches away from my face with the arm, the, upper, the arm in the up position. I press down through my legs, feet, and arm. I keep my core and glutes engaged as I press up as high as I can into this three-point bridge. I wanna get all the way up into full extension of the hips and spine. Once I reach this place, I then can continue to allow the up arm to travel down towards the ground and notice I'm rotating. My focus is following the traveling arm and I allow the arm to just hang and drape in this bent elbow position. I'm still driving and corkscrewing the down arm into the ground, keeping contraction through the trunk and glutes. I reverse the path in the exact same way. I begin with the arm first. My head travels following that arm. I hit and pass through that three-point bridge yet again in the down direction, and then I begin my descent with a hip hinge, but I'm still driving the down arm into the ground to keep activation of the upper mid-back. So it's very important that you fire those lats 
and those midlow traps because they are providing a tremendous amount of support for the body in that position. And especially because you're putting a, a lot of load because your single arm is supporting you, that whole upper uh, body is supported by one arm. So you very much want the activation of the trunk muscles to support the shoulder girdle, to keep your shoulder joints safe. Um, two pointers that are very important. If you have a limitation in your hip flexors, uh, if you sit, uh, spend a lot of time in a seated position and your hip flexors are tight or you're slouched, if you cannot get to full extension, you do not continue with that last bit of the traveling of the arm. So what I mean by that is, say I get up to here, and due to my limitations in my flexibility, whether it be in my shoulder and pec, or my ability to get my hips into full extension, right? if I can only get to here based on my flexibility, whether it's the spine, the hips, or what have you, I do not allow the arm to continue to travel. So I wouldn't come to here and then just let the arm go. If this is as high as you can go, that would be your crab reach. But you only do the continuation of the traveling of the arm into the overhead position if you can get into the full extension of the three-point bridge. So that is a very specific point as part of the certification. So please don't just randomly move that arm overhead if you have a restriction in your hip flexors. Um, now it is a great stretch to work on if again, as I mentioned, if you spend a lot of time sitting at a desk, the hip flexors get into a short, tight position. You want to do what you can to open those hip flexor muscles up in the front of the pelvis. And if you slouch when you sit, you want to strengthen your back muscles and be able to fully open up and extend that spine. So it feels fantastic to open up the entire anterior chain of the body if you do spend a lot of time um, in a seated position. And one other note is don't allow the knees to collapse in. So once you're up in the bridge and you rotate, you don't want that knee to collapse in. You both knees are pressing and staying open in the bridge. So you want to keep that in mind as well, that you're mindful of what is happening with the legs, especially the leg that you're rotating away from. It has a little tendency to internally rotate. You do not want to let that happen. The glutes are very much driving the legs down and in an outward direction. So that is the crab reach.